A few flurries tonight could have some winter weather for you tomorrow and tomorrow night. That's coming up in a few minutes. I'm Sophia Bosley, live at the Columbia City Council meeting, where council members are taking a second look at whether to put surveillance cameras downtown. Administrators changed the punishment for some Mexico high school students tonight. We'll have the latest. The Jefferson City City Council walks on a few issues at tonight's meeting. And it is the season for giving. Local volunteers are doing just that. KOMU 8 News at 10 starts now. From Studio 8A, coverage you can count on in high definition. This is KOMU 8 News at 10. A rain-snow mix is in store for mid-Missouri. Good evening. I'm Angie Bailey. And I'm Jim Rick. Thanks for joining us. We are two weeks officially away from the start of winter. Dave, what's going on outside tonight? Well, it looks like we've got some winter precipitation on the way, but the more we have the models evolve, we're talking about mostly the extreme northern part of our viewing area. Here's a map that indicates how a winter storm warning is in effect for Macon County. And where you see the blue counties, we've got Saline, Sheraton, uh, Howard, and Monroe counties under a winter weather advisory. For us, for the remainder of the nighttime hours, it's going to be cloudy and cold. We'll see a few flurries out there with a morning time drive temperature at 27. More on the forecast in just a few minutes. Okay, thanks, Dave. Okay. Public safety was a main topic at tonight's Columbia City Council meeting. Members had to decide whether or not to vote on installing surveillance cameras or letting the issue go to a vote of the people. Back in April, the City Council voted against installing those cameras because of the cost. KOMU 8, Sophia Beausoleil attended tonight's meeting and now has more. Sophia? Well, City Council hasn't come with a decision yet, and as I speak, they're still deliberating on whether to vote for or against putting surveillance cameras downtown. But by the looks of it, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Now, the issue came back to life after Karen Taylor spearheaded a petition and received about 3,700 3, signatures to get the issue back in front of City Council. Back in June, 17s attacked Taylor's son, Adam, in the garage on 10th and Cherry. Now, thanks to surveillance cameras, officers were able to catch the criminals who attacked Ta Adams. Now, Taylor believes cameras will only help law enforcement uh, capture people who are um, doing crimes. Now, some of the main reasons why people are against putting surveillance cameras downtown has to do with infringement of the First Amendment and as well as the cost. It would cost $50,000 to put these cameras on the streets. Now, city council is probably, by the looks of it, going to vote against it, but that doesn't mean it's the end of the life. What will happen is that this issue will be on the 2010 ballot in um, April, and then the public will be able to decide whether to put cameras downtown. Reporting live in Columbia, Sophia Beausoleil, KMU 8 News. Okay, and if there's a decision, I'm sure you'll let us know. Sophia, thanks a lot. Meanwhile, the Jefferson City City Council met to talk tonight to talk about a number of road and sidewalk projects. Members didn't vote on any measures, but KOMU 8's Allison Blood is here to tell us what plans were made. Allison? The council's waiting for a revised draft of a sidewalk ordinance that could keep businesses from having to build new sidewalks. Members of the Cole County Extension urged council members to pass regulations which would exempt some businesses and areas from building additional sidewalks. Our concern is in attempting to balance the needs of the community for sidewalks against the financial impact it would have on some residents, small business or not-for-profit organizations. Currently, all businesses that expand are required to expand the walkways, but sometimes there's not enough room for foot traffic to warrant a new sidewalk. We're refashioning an ordinance that will allow for those exceptions. Uh, the city council is working on those with the city attorney right now, and they haven't uh, yet got the language that uh, fits. Council members say they expect to vote on the measures at the next city council meeting on December 21st. Okay, thanks, Allison. Well, Mexico High School suspended five students and then changed the punishment this evening. The teenagers are kicked out of school for five days and have to attend an alternative school for seven days, said a parent. The basketball suspension still stands at five weeks. It happened during a home basketball game last Wednesday. According to the suspended students, a bystander confused their joking for bullying and then turned the kids into school administrators. The accused say the alleged victim is in fact their friend, and they say he even denies any bullying happened. Students met with the principal this morning. 
So each parent was taken into the office by the principal and then flat out denied access to the things that they accusing their children of. Parents say the principal would not show them video surveillance for her written statement from the incident. The superintendent says student discipline is a private matter. Former Missouri House Speaker Rod Jetton has been charged with second-degree assault against a woman. A complaint filed on November 15th in Scott County Circuit Court alleges the 42-year-old Republican hit the woman in the head and choked her into unconsciousness. Jetton is from Marble Hill and now works as a consultant. He left the House after the 2008 session because of term limits. Another mid-Missouri officer has been arrested for driving while intoxicated. Boone County Sheriff's deputies arrested off-duty Ashland Police Officer Scott Wilson early Thursday morning for drunk driving. Wilson resigned his position Thursday afternoon. He is the third officer arrested in two months for suspicion of DWI. Law enforcement arrested both an Osage County Sheriff's deputy and a Columbia police officer in November. Missouri police will be cracking down this week on drunk drivers. It's part of the Missouri Department of Transportation's You Drink and Drive, You Lose week. MoDOT is also promoting printable designated driver gift cards. The department is urging everyone not to get behind the wheel drunk. You can lose your license. Um, insurance coverage is hard to find. It would cost you thousands of dollars in legal fees. Um, you know, the embarrassment among family and friends. The printable gift cards can be found at our website in the links and numbers section at KOMU.com. Flames continue to burn and officials can't seem to control the heat down under. The latest on wildfires burning in Australia. Really proud to be part of a community that matches up um, people who can give and people who, who need some help. It, it's, um, it's really heartwarming to see this happen. It's families helping families during a tough economic holiday season. This is KOMU 8 News at 10. Coverage you can count on. Flames down under continue to heat up as protesters are cooling down. And students protest in rage after a classmate's killed. KOMU 8's Jennifer Meckles has tonight's Worldview Report. We'll start off tonight in Greece, where even nightfall isn't stopping these student protests. Students are facing off against riot police in response to a fatal shooting that happened last year. When police shot and killed a 15-year-old, Greece faced some of the worst riots the country had ever seen. This year's riots broke out during a demonstration by 3,000 people, mostly high school students. Police have detained more than 780 people, including the 136 arrests. Now we'll head to Australia, where firefighters are are dealing with a dozen major fires that are sweeping across the country. The cause seems to be mostly Mother Nature related, such as lightning. Record high temperatures and a prolonged drought are making it difficult for firefighters to keep the fires under control. And finally, we'll go to Copenhagen, where the United Nations Climate, Climate Change Summit kicked off today. A protester from Maldives, shown here, joined the 192 represented nations to show people the consequences of climate change. He sat in a tank full of dirty water to recreate a Maldives flood scene. His sign said he wanted people to act now and save his country from drowning. And that's a look around your world tonight. Global warming is a hot topic at a mid-Missouri conference. The discussion heats up with a guest speaker. And some very chilly temperatures out there and a threat of some wintry precipitation for us. But uh, will it get here? The forecast is next on KOMU 8 News at 10.